It's led people with, it's, it's resulted in kids having immune systems, and as adults particularly, that end up overreacting to microorganisms later in life because they've never come in contact with these germs before. And I remember as a kid, you know, I, my mom would take me to the pediatrician. The whole place smelled like alcohol. I may smell rubbing alcohol to this day, I think, in my pediatrician's office. And English-speaking countries have the highest levels of hygiene, antibiotic, and vaccine usage by far. And the same nations, this is a coincidence, have the highest rates of rheumatoid disorders, asthma, autoimmune issues, and allergies. Part of the point here is that being exposed to infectious agents is important. And the evidence substantiates the hypothesis, as Dr. Strachan pointed out, that regular exposure to microbial agents, which is part of connecting to the earth. So I'm here today to tell you to go out and play in the sandbox. Go play in the dirt a little bit. Plays a key role in the development of an immune system that does not overreact when exposed to allergic, infectious materials or to itself, which is autoimmune disease, those 130 to 140 different diseases that are now so prevalent in the United States. See, the Western way of life really connect, disconnects us from the earth. And here you see the antibiotics and the vaccinations and so forth. And on a slightly technical level, our immune system has some cells that are called T helper cells, subset one, and T helper cells, subset two. And those cells kind of keep a balance between allergic problems and keeping our defenses up for that, and infectious problems and keeping our defenses up for that, and they play a nice balance with each other. Nature and God sense a nice balance there. But if they get in balance, then we start overreacting against allergies, or we start overreacting against infectious agents, which can lead us overreacting against our own cells and lead to inflammatory type issues. And how many diseases involve inflammation? Most of them, right, Dr. Esser? Dr. Sapatino? Most of them, most of them involve some type of inflammation. Inflammation is not a bad thing, but we don't want to be in a situation where our immune systems are becoming overreactive. This is an old poster, public health poster. Maybe some of you who are old like me remember this, this kind of posters we saw as kids in the 1940s and 1950s. Cleanliness means health. And there's nothing wrong with being clean, but it's like anything can be overdone. I'm going to go out there and swim in the ocean, but I don't want somebody to dump me from a helicopter in the middle of the Atlantic. Water is good for you, but you can drown in it too if you overdo it. Cleanliness is good, but you can overdo it, and we have a situation where we're overdoing it. So like most good things in life, moderation is key. And you know, it's something that R.J. Cheatham used to say. He said, moderation, he didn't say moderation in all things. He didn't say moderation in rape, moderation in murder, moderation in theft. He said, moderation in all good things. This is important because even in good things you have to be moderate with. Because even good things, if you're immoderate with them, they can cause problems. They did a study at Duke University with rats. They took some rats that were lab animals. And the lab rats lead lives. They're not pleasant lives. I'm, I don't like seeing animals kept in labs. But they're similar to human lives in that they're kept very clean, almost in sterile-like environments. They're fed you know, very standard-type diets. And they compared those rats with rats that were in the wild, you know, living in the earth, getting in the garbage, eating all kinds of different things. And they wanted to find out what were their rates of autoimmune disorders and what were their rates of allergies, and were they actually any different uh, from each other, uh, those that were in very stringent situations and those which were not so stringent. And the, Duke Roden study suggested that an overly hygienic environment, an overly clean environment, 
can simultaneously increase the tendency to have increased allergic reactions and the tendency to acquire autoimmune disease despite the fact that these represent different types of immune responses. So whether we're talking about allergies and autoimmune diseases, and to me as a practitioner, they're two sides of the same coin. Those rats who got a little dirtier, who exposed themselves to more infectious agents, had a fi far higher level of protection and resistance against developing the allergies that are so common in Western societies today, as well as a much lower response, much lower development of autoimmune issues. And this is just some of the science behind it, which we'll skip, I think. But I will read the last paragraph. It said, these results are consistent with the ideas the animals without access to modern medicine have high levels of autoimmune-like and allergic-like immune responses that represent appropriate responses to unknown factors in their environment because indeed those rats were connected to the earth. Here's an interesting study. This is at the University of Iowa. And I have a, having had inflammatory bowel disease as a young man, I have an interest in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. I have a lot of patients that come to me with that. I heard about this study. It was, was done at uh, Haifa University, I'm sorry, University of, at, in Jerusalem, and also at the University of, of Iowa. And they took people with inflammatory bowel disease, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't try this at home. And these folks actually ingested true Kura sui, you know, sui sui, that's how you call pigs, right? These are pig worms, pig whip worms, and they actually drank a little cocktail of larva of whip worms for these people that had inflammatory bowel disease, people having bloody stool, people having cramping, bleeding, going to the bathroom 16, 20 times a day, a very nasty problem to have. And they had them drink a cocktail a whipworm cocktail. Yeah. And they found that when they did that, the pa most of the patients went from chronic illness to complete remission. And it's interesting that in Gambia, 90 to 99% of the people in Gambia have intestinal worms at some point in their lives. The chronic autoimmune disorders like asthma and Crohn's disease and rheumatoid arthritis or MS, multiple sclerosis, are not heard of, or they're not even mentioned in their lives. And that's an article from the Medical College of Wisconsin Education back in 2004. And we have this old theory actually called the old friends theory. Old friends. It has to do with the fact that people that generally had some type of parasite in their gut, along with more varied types of bacteria, they found that when people actually had helminths in their gut, helminths meaning worms, they actually had a lower incidence rate of most of these autoimmune disorders. One of the suggestions I therefore make for people, for their kids, and I happen to like, do you, know, you all like dogs? I like dogs a lot. I like all animals, but I, you know, I have a particular fondness for dogs. I've got a couple of my own. If my wife would let me, I'd have a lot more of them. But they found in studies that people that have children and they get dogs at a young age for those kids, those kids are much less likely, not more likely, they're much less likely to, for those kids to develop allergic issues, allergic problems, and autoimmune disorders. Ain't he cute? Look at that guy. How can you resist a smile like that? You know, my kids were young. I come home for a hard day at work teaching, a hard day at work at the clinic. And the kids, you know, be there watching TV. They go, uh, hey, Pop, how you doing? And my wife would say, oh, you're home. The dog to be, Pop, 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 Pop. <laughs> Every day. See, Fido gets immunized every day by his earth connections. That's why when I like terriers, it's my favorite types of dog. I like all dogs, I love them all. Even the little artificial ones like Pekingese, I like them all. But, you know, but the terriers, terrier means, you know, it means go to the earth. 
They're ground dogs. They're really earth grounded. Well, I have one of my dogs, Jack Russell. And you see this little guy, he's getting in there. They put their nose in there. They put their tongues in there. And they get into everything, don't they? Right? Well, uh, two of my dogs from the past, they're both deceased now. They both lived to be, uh, Challenge lived to be 15. Bell lived to be 14. And, I mean, their noses and tongues went everywhere. And the two of them got together, Challenge and Bella, my two dogs, and they decided to write a book. And this is the name of the book. Places Our Noses and Tongues Have Been by Challenge and Bella Goldberg. And th that book was not complete with volume one. It actually went into the second volume. And they were heading for a third volume, but they got too old and they, they passed away, you know, when they were 15 years old. It was a bestseller. In fact, it was reviewed by Fida Isadog 